and good morning. Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from beautiful downtown Orlando, Florida. Now, uh, we are here in front of the Orlando History Center. Now, recently on my uh, Choose My Adventure road trip, went through Peoria, Illinois, and stopped at the Riverfront Museum in Peoria, and they had a really cool T-Rex exhibit. Unfortunately, I found out that they had a mythical creatures exhibit that had recently left, and I wanted to see that exhibit. So I, I, I did the research, tried to find out where did this exhibit go, it was a traveling exhibit. It turns out it had headed down here, down south to Orlando, Florida. So they're having a, what do they call it? The world of mythical creatures. We've got giants, dragons and unicorns on display here in the History Museum in downtown Orlando. So out here in front of the History Center, they actually have some alligator statues, this being Florida and all. You can see that mean old gator there. And then this statue here of a Florida cracker wrestling with an alligator, doing some of those traditional alligator wrestling moves manhandling that gator. I love this sculpture here, the one of those folding postcard books. Florida being a very traditional place to go on road trips and vacations. See a Brahma bowl there, and if you look down, it's a postcard for the Wigwam Village in Orlando. Now that's not there anymore. There's still Wigwam Villages in Cave City, Kentucky, Holbrook, Arizona, and Rialto, California. But that is number four, and it is not there anymore. On the other side of the postcard, got some other things of Florida fame, American alligators picking oranges. And then at the top, they have the Orange County Courthouse, which is actually the building that is now the uh, History Museum. Let's see here, this skinned alligator is yeah. celebrating um, Valentine's Day. Okay, thank you. Oh, this is interesting. This is our healthcare heroes portrait yeah. of Orlando's health frontline workers. So these are actual health workers that worked during the COVID pandemic. They have their portraits here in the lobby. This is Bill Bear here. He owned an appliance store and nearby and he had these stuffed bears in his store. If you look over here, we can see these are some of his bears and these polar bears in his appliance store. This one here is named Beethoven. It's got its uh, rod there for conducting orchestras. Apparently the bears were all named after different artists and this one is Shoe Bear. A little space corner over there. See the different rockets there. And we have the mercury capsule. Let's peek inside here. Yeah, we can climb on in. Oh, oh, okay, it's a little, a little, a little tight. A little, a little snug in here, but uh, the important thing is that we're going to space. So let's see. Oh, where are we landing? Oh, what I do? Okay. What are, what are we watching? Let me make sure these buttons are all on. Project Mercury. Sounds important. Huh? Oh, there we go. This is the Mercury spacecraft, designed to sustain a man in orbit and return him safely to Earth. This is how uh, Howard Hughes <laughs> viewed the world. A Native American canoe here. Of course, yesterday we saw a uh, Native American canoe at the bottom of Silver Springs, but here is a dried out version. See the Native American there digging up some buried treasure. Oh no, here's the wrecked Spaniard clinging to his uh, lifeboat. You can see a canoe here being stocked full of foods and goods. Some corn. 
some uh, fur, a couple fish over there. Little owl totem there in the woods. Looks like we have this woman here. Looks like maybe she's uh, shucking oysters. Oh yeah, look at this mound of oysters here. See the child there adding some oysters to the massive oyster pile. Oh man, I bet I could eat that many oysters. This is early garbage dumps. Talking about like Indian mounds as they're often called. It says that some of them are just big piles of garbage. Some bones and other items used from animals that would have been eaten by the Native Americans. And this uh, deer bone right here actually still has an arrowhead embedded in it. It's an exhibit on swimming cows, better known as manatees. See the little manatee there poking his head up through the water here. Got some egrets in that tree right there. Where's that sign there? It says watch for manatees. Big problem is uh, they get hit by boats, unfortunately. People ride boats over top of them and uh, scar their backs up. So if you are in a boat in Florida, be really careful not to uh, hit a manatee. Of course, a big problem for people who live in Florida is sinkholes. Let's go stand in a replica sinkhole right here. Oh, look, it's got traffic lights in it. It's got signs. It's even got that truck. These cars here sunken in to the ground. Oh, the buildings collapsing. So yeah, we're like looking up from a sinkhole here. It's that tree there. Oh, this swimming pool is being sucked down and to the sinkhole. Entering the orange farming section here. You can see the orange picker picking some oranges. I smell, I don't know if it's psychological or they're pumping in the smell, but I can smell oranges. Some orange themed items there, an orange bowl. That's a sugar bowl right there. It says this is a orange that would be corked and filled with honey. I don't know, somehow that's almost confusing, like an orange full of honey. Shouldn't it be full of like, I don't know, orange juice? And down here we have the orange bird. It's actually a um, character created by Disney to help advertise the uh, Florida orange industry. And Disney still uses the character in their parks to some degree. But actually, I actually collect uh, some things that have the orange bird on it. Really I'm a huge fan of the orange bird. And there's an orange bank. And then there's an orange juice has a coin slot in it, so I guess you can use the juice and then save it for a bank. Some tools used for orange picking, including the Allen bag. It's apparently specifically designed for picking oranges. I'm up on the ladder there, going for some oranges. Talks about the Barber Mitzel feud. Says that this was their version of the Hatfield, Hatfields and McCoys. And it says that uh, this gun here uh, legend has it that it was actually used to murder the sheriff on February 21st, 1870. Here we have this man preparing some breakfast there for his dog. He's got some biscuits and bacon cooking there. Looks pretty delicious. Exhibit on cattle. Here we have the branding iron and uh, different brands. But because uh, because this is not Texas, we do not have a uh, no barbed wire exhibit to be seen. This is a whip. They famed uh, Florida crackers, which were cattle farmers, and they would uh, be known as crackers because the crack of the whip that they would use to control the cattle. This is a horn clipper for clipping 
the horns off of cattle so they can't gore each other or can't gore you. You know, when I saw these clippers at first, I thought that possibly they were for clipping off other parts of the cattle, but it does say horn clippers, so horns only. There's some uh, seminal people in here. A cabin over here. You can see the barrels of supplies. And up here, now this is actually interesting. They are pulling taffy. I guess that's the old fashioned way of uh, making taffy before they had those cool machines that you'll see in Gatlinburg. Just two people got together and just, just yanked on some taffy together. Looks like they're having a good time. I mean, back in those days, that was, that was some serious entertainment. But I do wonder, like, did that make your hands sticky? Seems, seems like it would. Here inside of the cabin, you can see the bed there. Of course, Florida, you gotta have that mosquito sheet or you'll just have all your blood from your body drained before morning. These are some leisure items for the uh, crackers. And some playing cards there harmonica, some dice. Here we have a sugar cane mill that's used for pressing sugar cane and turning it into sugary syrup. It's this big barrel of, uh, of sugary syrup right here. Mm -mm -mm. So I guess, yeah, they're making taffy, they're making the sugary syrup. Yeah, I guess they loved candy back in the old days in, in Florida. As I mentioned, this building actually was the uh, official courthouse for Orange County. They've actually left their courtroom unchanged so we can get a peek in here at the old courtroom. Pretty, pretty magnificent. Now this was from a different courthouse here in Orange County. This one was demolished in 1957. They preserved the old clock here in the museum. And this section here is called Building a kingdom. Here we have an old steamboat. Do not see uh, Steamboat Willie on there, however. Here's the Indian River Produce. Actually, Indian River Produce still in business and still sells oranges to people on their way out of Florida. Here we have a section on tourism before Disney. Some of the old school Florida tourism. Florida, originally a big fishing destination. You can see the uh, fishing reel belt there. Someone would strap that to their pelvis and rest their uh, fishing rod there in that hole. It's this old timey vehicle right here. Looks like we can step behind the wheel. And, uh, oh, there we go. An old Florida road. Steer. It's old Florida plates, salt and pepper shakers. Oh, there's that ashtray shaped like a bathtub. So we had a tub of fun at Florida. I do love like these old plates here, like the different the map of Florida with all the tourist destinations on it. I just realized this postcard I actually have. A postcard with that image on it. Big fan of these old school plastic snow globes. Here we have an exhibit on Cypress Gardens. See the water skis there. One of the most classic roadside attractions in Florida history, Cypress Gardens. Now it is not there anymore, technically. Technically, maybe it technically is, because it was. Uh, it is now Legoland, Florida. And they did keep the uh, Cypress Garden section within uh, Legoland. And they actually do still have the water ski shows, but they use uh, Lego characters in the show. So it's good that they uh, took some effort in preserving Cypress Gardens. Looking at this little figure here, I'm trying to figure out if that's a mold, a matic or not. I don't know, could that be a mold -a matic I'll have to do some research and see if that is. Oh, here we have the Dixie Highway, one of the, the lost uh, tourist highway 
that uh, encompasses the, the uh, South and the Midwest. Now, if you've been following this channel for a long time, you know that last beginning of last year, I did a full Dixie Highway road trip. I traveled all the way, I think it was up, down, and then back up. And uh, yeah, it took me about 20 days to do all this. I didn't do all, necessarily all of the little extraneous bits, but covered pretty much the entirety of the Dixie Highway. So if you're interested in seeing that, please check it out. I mentioned that Wigwam Village here in Orlando no longer exists. Um, the other versions in Arizona, California, and Kentucky do exist, but here is a homage to the Orlando Wigwam Village. Oh, we can see the uh, the map there, the layout. That is a big one. They had, it looks like they had maybe more of the wigwams than, uh, than the ones that are still in existence. Man, I wish that was still here. Inside the wigwam here, we have some uh, exhibits on other, the great Florida roadside attractions. Can't forget Gatorland, positively one of the best uh, wildlife parks in existence. And over here, the Singing Tower, Lake Wales. I've never been to the Singing Tower. I need to uh, need to check that out. That's I gotta put that on the list. And uh, and some Silver Springs souvenirs. We just went to Silver Springs yesterday. The Diamondback Rattlesnake. They did not have a rattlesnake show yesterday. Yeah, you can see that plate there has the glass bottom boats that we went on yesterday. Big tree park. I think this uh, this tree, the biggest tree called the Senator, I believe it's gone. I think it fell down or burned or something. But uh, I think it's a big stump now. And then a tourist recreation. <laughs> the uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that word. I, uh, this is not there anymore. It took six years to complete, but it was short-lived. I guess it's just a little tiny city that you could stand in. And look at this. I actually have an exhibit on uh, Walt Disney World in here. It says, touch the wand to begin. Oh, what happened? To build a better mousetrap. Remember, this is before Disney. BB. This replica of Cinderella Castle. Some of the Disney, Walt Disney World merchandise. See the Walt Disney ashtray there. There's that orange bird and a uh, snow globe. Now I do have a set of these classic mouse ears back in the bunker. I had a Mickey Mouse watch. I got it for Christmas and it was a big deal. Back then in the 80s, the Mickey Mouse watch was a big deal. And I left it in, I had it for like a week and I left it in my locker at the YMCA and somebody stole it. That was, that was one of the most sad moments of my childhood. You can see the monorail leaving the station up there, going past Spaceship Earth, all the way over to the Contemporary Resort. Some items in this case to do with the opening of Disney. There's the itinerary for the opening event at uh, Walt Disney World. I have a complimentary ticket for the Bicentennial Parade. And then these are uh, grand opening tickets for Epcot Center. Now this here is super cool. We've got a map of the Orlando area here on this globe. You can see airplanes flying in from all directions to visit Orlando. Okay, I'm looking for some of the attractions here. I think that is Little Person City right there. And as we move over there, I think that's the big tree, the Senator. In the middle, we have Orlando proper, where we are right now. And um, you can see a woman sliding down a giant water slide here. This is actually an interactive map, so we'll 
Oh yeah. You can see the house is lit up there. The airplane. Oh, look at that. See the city light up. Looking down there, see the giant gator head of Gatorland. And there, in between downtown Orlando and the Magic Kingdom, got Universal. See the little globe there. In a few days, we'll be heading over here to Walt Disney World. You can see the different icons there, the Magic Kingdom, Cinderella Castle, Spaceship Earth, the Earful Towers. Okay, so this button here will light up the Dixie Highway. So let's see. There we go. It's the road I took last year, right through downtown Orlando. I actually filmed right in front of this building, but I did not go inside. I think it was closed at the time. Down here in Claremont, Florida, if you look, you can see the Citrus Tower. Actually looking down on the Citrus Tower from above. Okay, we can light up the railroads. Oh, look at all those trains. Buttons over here will uh, light up Disney. Oh. Have a massive plane in here. See the men here uh, doing some work on the plane with their shirts off. There's a guy behind the wheel there. All right, I guess we follow these red dragon prints into this section. Giants, dragons, and unicorns. The world of mythic creatures. And we start off with dragons. That Asian dragon right there. This is a parade dragon they would use in street festivals. And we have a dragon map showing all the different locations where dragons existed across the world. The Fafner in Iceland, Smog in England. Isn't he from uh, The Hobbit? <laughs> Let me see, we have the uh, Leyden in ancient Greece, Mushu in ancient Babylon, Vritra in India, the Descending Dragon in Vietnam, the Ryujin in Japan. Oh man, America has no dragons. That's really lame. Here are the uh, different varieties of dragons here with the European dragons. You can see that dragon puppet right there. This is Dragon's Blood, Sangria Dracul. It says that this is actually made from fruit, but people believed it to have uh, magic powers and it was highly sought after in uh, medieval Europe. It says this weather vane is a dragon-like creature known as the Wyvern. I like this dragon. He has a rooster face. He has eight rooster legs. It's he's excessively roostery for a dragon. In Europe, they see dragons as grim destroyers. It says kills people with fiery or poisonous breath. Has wings. Can strangle animals with the tail. It's funny that they would take time to strangle someone with their tail when they could just use their their breath. Here is the Mexican dragon. Quetzalcoatl says that he was believed to be able to control the weather and the rotation of the earth. Here we have the Asian dragons. You can see the layout here. They have excellent eyesight, sweet smelling saliva, that's an interesting detail. Bump on their head called Chi Mu helps them float into the heavens. Says that dragons were considered to be heavenly creatures. See a robe with a dragon on it, as well as these uh, kaiju figures. I guess dragons inspired the kaiju in uh, in Japanese monster movies. And look at this: this supplement here claims to have dragon bone in it. Or we can build our own dragon. This should be fun. So you select a body. Okay. Uh, we'll go with this, make him a little chunky. Get him a leg. Oh, I like that. Big creepy leg right there. Oh, look, he's crawling on the ground. 
needs a tail. Let's get him a twisty curly Q tail. And he needs some wings. Big wing there. Oh, look at him. And finally, let's give him a head. Oh. Uh, look at this. One thing you can give him seven heads. I think seven heads is too many. Let's let's give him this head. There we go. There's our dragon. Building your dragon. Your dragon has been released. Oh, where is he? Oh, is that him? Is that him in the clouds right there? I guess these are all different dragons that people have created and released into the wild. Now we head in to the mermaid section. Here we have Mami Wata. This is a uh, African water spirit. Now I've actually seen uh, I've seen this inscription before. On uh, I think it's used in voodoo that they. Uh, Worship Mommy Wata. See her looking at herself there in the mirror. She's got a snake wrapped around her body. Oh, and you can't have an exhibit on mermaids without talking about the Fiji mermaid. This is the original drawing of the original Barnum Fiji mermaid that's believed to have been destroyed. But check this out. That's actually a really cool Fiji mermaid they got there. You can look at his look at his teeth. Oh, very, very cool. This is Sedna, a mermaid uh, from uh, the Inuit people of Canada and Greenland. It says that uh, her job is to release the wild animals to be hunted. So there's like an antler carving of her there. Here we have the European mermaids that were believed to have been real, the people of the Medieval times did uh, believe that mermaids were real. There was real historical accounts of mermaids. You can see in this book here, this uh, bi biology book listed right next to this lobster right here, we have the mermaid. I mean, sometimes the European mermaid is shown as having two tails instead of one. Of course, the uh, coffee company Starbucks would use that as their uh, logo. Check the mermaid map. We have uh, La Siren from Haiti, Sedna, we saw from uh, Canada and Greenland, mermaid sightings in Ireland, in ancient Rome, Thailand, Japan. Call me vanity. Uh oh, it appears that someone has released the Kraken. We have the squid like monster that would take down whole ships. See a serpent, touch and hold down. So we're gonna, yeah, I see the serpent right there. We're gonna pull down, oh, it's just some whales. I was hoping it'd be a sea serpent, but it's really just some dumb old whales. Oh, what the, oh, 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 That's, oh, these are just dolphins, lame. I hate when I think I see a giant sea serpent and it's just a bunch of dolphins. I'm kidding, I love dolphins. Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's it, what's it gonna come up with? Sea a serpent? Oh, it's those dumb whales again. Here is talking about the giant squid, which is a genuinely a real animal. And it says, this is a giant squid eye. As you can see by my hand there. That's a big eye, big old squid eye. This is a picture drawn by uh, Swiss naturalist Conrad Gessner of a hippocampus. Now apparently his belief, and it was a belief that a lot of people had, was that every animal on the land had a uh, version 
of themselves in the sea. So there would be a horse on land, so of course there would be a horse in the ocean as well. Um, I believe this theory was uh, uh, debunked. This is a Japanese sea monster known as the Sea Monk. It's this big shadowy figure that just comes up and dumps your boat. That is genuinely terrifying. It's a map of Iceland drawn in uh, 19... It's a map of Iceland drawn in 1585 that included uh, sea monsters. Look down there and see a variety of monsters that they believe to be inhabiting the waters outside of Iceland. Of course, one of the most famous sea monsters is the Loch Ness Monster. He's seen here as a uh, whiskey bottle, and he's wearing a little Scottish hat. And here we have a beautiful unicorn, one of the most enchanting and beloved of all monsters. It talks here of unicorn-like creatures and the belief that the rhinoceros, as uh, strange as that sounds, may have been the uh, real-life inspiration for uh, unicorn beliefs. That uh, yeah, this rhinoceros skull here, people could have believed that it was a horse with uh, with horns. Although his horns are a lot stubbier than the unicorn. This is a Chinese unicorn known as a quillen. A quillen has just a little tiny horns up there. And a Japanese unicorn known as a kirin. It says that it's actually a, a mascot for a beer company in addition to being a real mythical creature. Okay, and here it talks a little bit about the actual horn of the unicorn being the narwhal horn. Of course, the narwhal is a very interesting creature, um, a dolphin-like creature with a long, one singular long tooth that, come, that protrudes from its mouth. And it said that, um, the, that explorers would bring back these narwhal uh, tusks and uh, I guess they conflated this with the rhinoceros, and uh, these started. I guess the unicorn started appearing with this uh, narwhal tusk. Oh, and we are allowed to touch touch the tusk as long as we can say that properly. Here we have the griffin. See, so the head, torso, and talons of an eagle. They had uh, body of a lion and wings. It's saying here that uh, the griffin legend may have been inspired by this protoceratops skull that was found in the Gobi Desert. And here is a bone belonging to a giant. However, it's saying that uh, ancient Greeks may have uncovered some mammoth bones. You see them all arranged here correctly in the mammoth. However, <laughs> If you rearrange them just slightly and give them a uh, give them a, a, a vertical positioning, then suddenly you have a giant. And also, I, I, I do know this that the the skulls here, because the elephants and mammoth have a hole right there for their tusk. That people that's actually people would find those tusks and believe that it was a cyclops, which also is a type of giant. So, arrange it this way, you got a mammoth. Arrange it this way, you got yourself a cyclops. Here is the local section. We have some Florida creatures. And this is Stuff the Magic Dragon. He is the uh, mascot for the uh, local basketball team, the Orlando Magic. And it said he was actually voted uh, is a two-time winner of the uh, NBA's Mascot of the Year Award. There's the uh, American Alligator, a monster in its own right. Let's see the alligator skull there. And it talks about Albert and Alberta Gator. These are the mascots for the University of Florida. Let's see a very early version. I like this early version where he's skinny and has the uh, leather football helmet on, but that's the more modern version of Albert Gator it says that they used to have real live gators that were their mascots but for some reason they decided it best to switch to uh, walk around costumes oh, and of course you can't talk about mermaids in Florida without talking about Wiki Watchy you can see they have an authentic 1950s mermaid tale 
from uh, Wikiwachi State Park. For those of you not familiar, uh, the attraction is a classic tourist attraction. The uh, women dress as mermaids, complete with tails. They breathe with a hose underwater and put on a show. It's, it's amazing stuff. And here we have a manatee skeleton. It says that some people may have discovered this and believed it to be a mermaid skeleton. I could kind of see that. The head, the head would be a little weird, but uh, other than that. And of course, and of course, Florida Sasquatch, the skunk ape. You see a drawing there of the skunk ape. He looks kind of like a owl. And then we have, of course, a can of swamp ape IPA. And here is a board where you can create your own mythical creatures. Let's see what some people have created here. The What is that? A hippo? Aardvark with wings? This guy here. I like I like ostrich cat there and rooster with legs. Um, let's make our, oh gosh, look at, that is amazing. Let's make our own uh, mythical creature. I call this one a dogfin. Half dog, half dolphin. Then we have half bee, half ear. I call him, I call him a beer. <laughs> now here's half crab, half skunk. I call it a scab. All right, no more, uh, no more joking around. We got a shark with the tail of an elephant, the head of a T-Rex, and he can breathe. He can breathe fire, and uh, and he has wings. There we go. Now that is a mythical creature. This final exhibit is about African Americans in uh, Central Florida. Oh my gosh, it's an authentic clan uniform. It says this was found in the attic of a uh, dentist in Fort Pierce. So the dentist was a member of the clan. It's just horrible to think that uh, that people in the community like that would be engaged in something so terrible. Oh wow, look at this. This is the old directory for this very building we're in, the uh, Orange County Courthouse. And you can see there they have separate waiting room for white people, separate waiting room for colored people. And there is the uh, colored men's room uh, restroom sign. Traveled out here to International Drive and I uh, wanted to get some lunch here at this uh, very unusual and large McDonald's. One of the few McDonald's actually has an upstairs section. Now I came here before to check out this, the uh, Mac Tonight animatronic and it was my understanding that it was turned off during the pandemic but I had heard recently that it may possibly be uh, active again. Now it's not currently singing. I don't know how often it's supposed to go off, but maybe we'll wait here a little bit and see if he starts singing. Now here, this McDonald's, they do have a normal McDonald's menu, but they also have pizza and pasta. I figured we'd, we'd try uh, some McDonald's pizza for the first time today. So apparently at this McDonald's, they'll actually bring the food to your table. I got my little uh, table tent there. We can sit here and we can keep an eye on Mac tonight. And if he starts moving, I'll, uh, I'll get some footage. All right, it's been taking a little while for my food to get here. And uh, Mac up there has not moved an inch. All right, and here we go. That is a McDonald's pepperoni pizza right there. So I've still been trying to find things that I can eat. My mouth, the dental work, still can open my mouth, cannot open my mouth all the way. But I did have someone suggest that pizza was a good thing to eat while uh, while you had a, a, a small bite because it's flat. So it fits easily in your mouth. You don't have to open your mouth too wide. So we'll try this McDonald's pizza here. Mm. 
It's actually pretty yummy. It's got it's very greasy. You can see the grease drip down. It is a good greasy pizza. Surprisingly delicious. Yeah, the pepperoni's really good. I like the big floppy pepperonis. Fiesta pizza is finished. But Mac tonight still sits silent. So unfortunately, he did not serenade us during our meal. Um, I saw a thing on YouTube where it looked like he had been singing circa August of 2021. But uh, it seems to be silent at the moment. If anyone has any information on when he sings, uh, let me know. So thank you for joining me here today in Central Florida as we checked out the mythical animals exhibit at the uh, Orlando History Center. Unfortunately, we came over here to the McDonald's. The Mac Tonight animatronic did not appear to be working tonight. I'm try I, I, there's not a lot of information out there. Um, th th this is a working animatronic that sings songs. Um, I felt like I'm, I came out here uh, a year or two ago and it seems like it was not working. I thought maybe it was turned off because of the pandemic. But then I saw on YouTube that in August, uh, last August, that someone videotaped it working. So I don't know if it's completely random or intermittent or how hard it is to catch him uh, singing, but we failed tonight. But anyways, <laughs> thank you uh, for coming along. If you'd like to subscribe to this channel, it'll let you know when new videos arrive, which is almost every day. And uh, if you want to help uh, support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. Three dollars or more will get you a postcard once a month. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. All that is in the description of this video. And all that helps keep this train on the tracks, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until tomorrow morning, my friends. This one's in the bag. <laughs>